Because this is as good a time as any to do a short story about the Democrat Party. I did a longer version of this, much longer on radio, but let me sum it up. You've been told over the decades that the Democrat Party was founded by Jefferson. Remember all these Jefferson Jackson dinners? Well, they don't have them anymore because now they hate Jefferson and they hate Jackson. But nonetheless, they used to have those dinners a decade and more ago. But Jefferson didn't found the Democrat Party, neither did Jackson. It was a president that you probably don't know a whole lot about, Martin Van Buren of New York. And what had happened was the Federalist Party basically collapsed. That left Jefferson and his party the Democrat Republican Party, or better known as the Republican Party, but not the Republican Party as we know it today. And so um, that party sort of lost its purpose in many ways, because being such a big party, it really didn't stand for anything and it stood for everything. Uh, so it was factionalized, if you will. Martin Van Buren was a New York street politician. And he saw this happening. And in New York, he decided he was going to build this new party. It started out as a club. Um, it started out as using the spoil systems to get club members appointed to local and state positions. And then it became bigger, a political entity. And Martin Van Buren was very good at organizing. And he was very good at using the media to promote his agenda and to promote this party that he was creating. And uh, he could see that there were factions within New York and later factions within the country that they could cobble together. Uh, he wanted to cobble together the, the slave-owning southern parts of the country. He wanted to cobble together that area with, say, New York. He believed in populism, remember that word? He wanted to get rid of the old so-called aristocracy that was represented by the president before Jackson, that would be uh, John Quincy Adams. So he pushed for voting for all men. People don't remember all men couldn't vote early on. They had owned property in a lot of states. So he pushed to eliminate that. The more voters, the better, who were men. Uh, for this populist uprising. And so he wanted, again, to cobble together these different factions. He wanted as many people to vote within his box as possible. And uh, he would attack the aristocracy, as he would call it. But he did one other thing that was very, very crucial. In addition to the spoil system, putting top party apparatchiks in as many positions as possible. They used the post office for this originally, but as the state governments got bigger and later the federal government got bigger, they, they used the federal government and the state governments. Uh, he, he pushed very, very hard, not so much for an ideology or a philosophy, but his position was you need to create hot button issues or where they already exist you need to make them hotter. You need to make people angry. And you need to make them angry with each other. And the people who are angry with each other, you need as many of them on your side in the Democrat Party as possible. That's how you get out the vote. And that's how you get out these new voters. Now, interesting, before the Van Buren approach on expanding voting among men, you had in states 70% of those eligible to vote voting, 80% voting. In one election in the early 1800s, you even had 92% of the population that was able to vote voting. When they went towards broader voting without necessarily property rights, it collapsed. People said, what the hell am I voting for? I, you know, I don't have any property, so why should I vote? So forth, because government wasn't that powerful back then. I'm doing a very truncated version of this because to me it was fascinating to see the overlap with today. So Van Buren, as much as possible, pushed his party to oppose compromise, to oppose unity within the country, uh, to oppose any kind of, of joint will 
between different factions to do the opposite. Does that not sound like the Democrat Party today? Trying to nationalize the voting system? Um, trying to uh, destroy any kind of cohesion around the Constitution or the civil society in our country? Keep people angry, keep people riled up, constant emergencies and so forth. You see, the Democrat Party has never embraced Americanism from its very birth. Now, eventually, the Democrat Party would have to take a position on slavery, and it did. It took a position for slavery because most of its support came out of the South and slave-supporting uh, parts of the North. And so it would take a stand. It's a, it's a chameleon-like party. So here you have a party that supported slavery and segregation uh, all the way up into the uh, 1960s. And now it's a party that supports, in my view, Marxism and various factions of Marxism. But it has never really supported Americanism. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.